Tonight on BCM Weekly News, in this week's special report, new and controversial legislation to remove LGBT rhetoric in school systems, how does Berea respond to this? Also, the Appalachia Center hosted its annual symposium. Matt Carmack attends the events and recaps the best parts. And reporter Diane Joan reports on the new art ex exhibition opened up in the Roger Tra Trailer Gallery. All this and more coming up soon, tonight on BCN Weekly News. Live from BCN Arts Studio in Berea, Kentucky, this is BCN Weekly News. Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of BCN Weekly News. My name is Michael Harmon III, the campus community was notified about frustrations according, regarding a group of new anti-LGBTQ bills when SGA President Connor Courtney sent an email out about his concerns. These ideas were later introduced at the general faculty meeting late, later last week. Rem reporter Amaya Weekly with more information. Thanks, Mike. Many students, especially those involved in SGA, are feeling fearful and angry because of these new proposed bills. Some of the bills include Senate Bill 150, which has recently been passed through the Kentucky Senate, which is considered the most immediate threat out of other anti-LGBT bills. This bill could prohibit school staff and students from being required to use the correct pronouns for students. The other bills being presented involve forcing teachers to out queer students to their parents and banning in-class discussion of LGBT-related topics. I sat down with general faculty and Student Government Association member Ket Perkins to talk about what the SGA is doing in order to raise awareness and protest against these bills. The proposition to kind of bring this speech um, to the general faculty assembly at large was kind of thought of by the SGA Senate kind of as a whole, kind of taking student feedback and being like, okay, what can we as a Senate do to bring to the faculty and staff that change can get done, um, that like a normal like body of students couldn't fully do if they're not in the assembly. Um, so like some of the things that we've been doing are like introducing these proposals to have the college speak out against especially these super anti-queer bills. And so some of the things that we're hoping that spurs from this are other colleges and universities in the state taking a stance against them as well. This is an ongoing story, so we appreciate any new information, and we will keep you all updated as we learn more. Reporting from the outside of Draper for BCN Weekly News, this was Amaya Weekly. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Amaya. For more information, contact Connor Courtney or SGA Vice President Maggie Neal on how to contact your representative. In other news, Silas House and the Appalachian Center hosted a symposium earlier this week. At this event, students and community members can meet Appalachian authors and workshop their stories. Reporter Matt Carmack attends the event. Wanted to attend this year's Appalachian Symposium but did not get an opportunity to go? Here is what you missed. Students, faculty, and community members gathered in the Appalachian Center to hear readings from authors Michael Crowley and Lisa Kwong. After the readings, audience members had a Q&A session where writer's block and the writing process were discussed. At the end of the night, the authors took one-on-one -on -one questions and signed books they had for sale. Drinks and snacks were provided and the night was overall pretty relaxed. Yeah, the Appalachian Symposium tonight uh, was featuring Asian uh, Appalachian people or Appalachian people. Um, I thought it was really eye-opening to um, hear that perspective that we don't really hear much, especially within our uh, culture today. We There's not enough conversation about Asian Americans. Folks at the Appalachian Center started Tuesday's events at 10 a.m. with workshops from last night's authors. In the afternoon, Silas House hosted interviews with Kwong, Crowley, and another Appalachian author, Nima Avesha. Tuesday night wrapped up Avesha reading from their book over Facebook Live. Well, I'm just really uh big fans of both of these writers and we're really glad to bring them in. They're both doing great work in the region, especially in illuminating that Appalachia is a 
multifaceted place with lots of different kinds of people and ways of being. And um, at the Appalachian Symposium, we always uh, focus on that at every one. Um, and these are nationally acclaimed writers that we're able to bring on campus. And um, so I think of it as a way for the campus to serve the community too, because people come from the community and you know drive for many miles to, to see these authors. So it's two days of events, you know, one night of readings, then the next day is conversations and workshops. So it's real uh, hands-on stuff for people who are doing who are creative writers. Um, I thought they had a great conversation about the writing process, and students seemed to be really engaged and enjoy what they said. Overall, these last two days have been a great opportunity for writers to get together and to grow in their Appalachian identity. Reporting from the Appalachian Center for Berea College News and Radio, Mac Carmack. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Mac. The event seemed like a lot of fun, and we hope the Appalachian Center does something similar next year. Coming next on BCM Weekly News, Hannah Vogel is showcasing her work until March at the lower level of the Trailer Art Gallery. Stay tuned to see some of the artwork showcased. We'll be right back after this short break. My son got diagnosed with it. They came in and said, we're moving him to ICU. He's got a 50-50 chance. I don't want anybody else to go through this. It, it can be controlled if we do our part. There are stories here in Kentucky of friends, reliving old tales, writing new ones, of tradition, patience, and golden treasure of spirit told in thunder and applause. Kentucky, unbridled spirit. Visit KentuckyTourism.com. 1,600 seeds all seeming unalike, all coming from some place where money does not grow on trees. We were planted to remember that when we walk away from here, our journey is just beginning. Our journey is just beginning. We were planted. We were planted here. We were planted here to grow, and we did. Thanks for staying with us. We go to reporter Diane Chong, who covered some of the artwork featured in the gallery and why you won't want to miss on this exhibit. Diane? Behind me at the Rizuma Gallery in Berra College is the pioneering work of Hanna Vogel. When you walk into the Rizuma Gallery, you might dive into the richness and diversity of art collections. The Doris Ullman Galleries was established to strive to reach across campus to engage more broadly with the arts. Especially, the Borough College Art Collection was established in 1935 as a teaching collection to provide Borough College students with the best example of art and artifacts from around the world. Recently, the art collection is made of more than 15,000 works of art of cultural significance. Currently, there are two art exhibits featured, Rediscover and Cradling, in the Masterpiece Gallery and Lower Trailer Gallery. I spoke with the creator of art galleries and student majoring in art to get more information and to find out what it means to them. So the Doris Ullman Galleries and the Berea College Art Collection are first um, a resource for our students. Our collection has over 15,000 objects, um, artworks again from all over the world um, that are a resource for students to learn about and study, um, much in the same way that we have the Appalachian Center on campus, special collections and archives at the Hutchins Library too. So we host class visits for students who are working in disciplines all around the campus, um, and we can do individual research appointments or gallery tours as well. Well, as an art student, I think it's really important to have like visual access to professional artwork. And also our school has one of the most extensive art collection. So I think it's really blessed to be in Berea College to able to like have access to like various exhibition. So in upcoming exhibition, I'm not sure like what do they have, but I'm really looking forward to it. Following those exhibits, unusual kill by Leslie Smith and Katie Wigglesworth just opened this Wednesday. All students, faculty, and staff of Barrow College are welcome to join the lavishness of the Doris Ullman Collection. I will keep you updated with more exhibits that come your way this semester. For Business Weekly News, this was the end. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Diane. 
We hope you'll take a few moments to look at the gallery before it closes in March. On behalf of our news team, thank you for watching BCM Weekly News. I'm Michael Harbin III. For more coverage, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Berea College News Radio. And watch our show online at www.bcnewsradio.com. We'll see you next week. Good night.